Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello everyone. Ayan, so naririnig na ang tinig ng ating mga bisita at talagang Easter na Easter na. So, batian naman tayo dyan. Hello, hello. Let uh, us praise the Lord. Ayan. So, mag-hello sa atin ng ating mga kasabayan na iinom. Walang iba ko si Tumbe, si Monsignor Bert Espinilla. Hi, Monsi. Hi. Happy Easter to everybody. At ngayon, yes po, maliwanag na maliwanag. So, hindi halata na tayong ay daling sa siesta. So, ngayon din, babatiin din natin ang medyo mata-bata. Ito po, hindi po ito senior, pero siya ay tagapag-alaga ng mga senior. Wala akong iba kung hindi. Si Nurse Erwin. Hi, Erwin. Erwin. Hi, po sa atin lahat sa mga senior good afternoon. Ayan, so sabay-sabay tayo ngayon iinom ng ating mainit na tsaa o mainit na kape. Mm. Ang sarap. Ayan, so welcome po. Welcome to our program. Ang 20% programang puno ng puso para sa mga seniors at para sa ating lahat. At kita niyo naman, maliwanag na maliwanag, no? Dito ngayon sa isang matindi at mainit na hapon kasi ang ating pag-uusapan for the whole month of May, nagsisimula pa lang po tayo. Welcome to our First Monday of May. So alam ko kayo ay nagsipag-celebrate ng kapistahan ni San Jose. Kaya nga ang bisita natin, si Monsi. Alam po ninyo sa ating mga taga-subaybay, si Monsignor Roberto Espinilla, ang siyang parish priest po ng St. John the Worker Parish dito po sa Palanan, Makati. Siyempre po, no, ang mga parokya ng San Jose ay all over the Philippines at mismo sa Archdiocese of Manila, marami po yan. Pero hindi lang po yun ang kanyang pinagkakaabalahan. Si Monsignor din po ang pinaka-Archdiocese sana leader o minister ng Corsilios in Christianity. Tama po ba Monsignor? Batiin mo naman ang mga Corsilista natin. Oh, tama ho. Happy Easter sa lahat ng mga Corsilista sa Archdiocese sa Manila. Lalo na ang ating mga leader sa bawat vicariate kasi nag-agayaan aming organization sa meeting namin bawat vicariate ay represented by one Corsillo leader and of course uh, they, I'm happy na we continue to be alive uh, even in the pandemic period Amen at hindi lang continues to be alive kung hindi patuloy pa rin si Monsi kahit senior citizen na ay talagang go 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 pa rin So, Monsignor, ang gusto kong malaman, ilang taon ka na po sa pagpapari mo? Sa pagkapare, last December 21, ako po ay 50... Ano? <laughs> Kalimutan ko na tuloy. Ano? 50 plus, 50 plus. 50 plus already. Senior, senior moment yan, Monsignor, no? Kaya uh, maliwanag na maliwanag na senior na talaga. Pero itagugulat po mong senior na ating mga viewers, ako alam ko, ang iyong anniversary bilang pare, ito ay December 21, 1955. Ibig sabihin, this year, ikaw po ay 57 years na na pare. That's right. Ano ma? Yes. Thank you. Kaya sisigaw tayong lahat at praise the Lord! Ayan. So, Monsignor, yan ang unang question ko kaagad sa'yo. Ano ba ang mga bago magura sa iyong alaala? Ano yung mga matitinding alaala mo sa loob ng 57 years of your priesthood? Una, actually, noong first year ko, I was more in a special ministry. And, uh, Maybe if you do not know yet, I do not belong to the Archdiocese of Manila in the beginning. Oh. I belong to the Diocese of Sorsogon. Mm. But then I became a teacher there, at the same time a secretary of the bishop. No? And I was uh, therefore staying in the seminary there. Then after three years, I came to Manila when I got sick with my uh, tuberculosis. 
to recover and at the same time I had my uh, uh, medical check up and we found out that I'm also allergic with so many things so I decided to stay in Manila to for the uh, for the uh, uh, medication of my allergies and uh, I used to go regularly to Manila Medical Center there in the United Nations Avenue, no? And then, of course, uh, while I'm here, my bishop told me that they wanted me to become the chaplain of the national, uh, national chaplain of the young Christian workers. Mm. So I became national chaplain of the uh, workers in 1970, young Christian workers. And that is the group that was founded by Cardinal Cardine, no? And it is an attempt to make the young people realize that even their work is also an apostolate. No? And at the same time, to make God the center of their lives. And then uh, in 1972, I was approached by Bishop, uh, I forgot his name now, but at the time he was Bishop of Isabella. Um, he asked me that uh, they would like that I become at the same time Chaplain, national chaplain of the Student Catholic Action because uh, uh, the national chaplain became bishop and that is uh, uh, he, he became the secretary of the CBCP. So since I, I was not very sure yet whether I have trained people for leadership enough people, rather, for leadership in young Christian workers. And he asked if I could be both chaplain of the student Catholic action on the young Christian workers for one year so that I can prepare whichever group I would like to work on. And when, uh, after one year, I saw there were enough leaders in young Christian workers, then I became the national chaplain of the student Catholic action at the same time. Uh, not only acting, but also regular uh, national chaplain in the student Catholic action. So I, I was able to go around the country to visit, because that was part of my job to really uh, do it, especially during the time of Marcelo. So I changed a bit the name of uh, SEA. I made this cap to make it uh, look more nationalistic by saying Student Catholic Action of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And we put also some ideas of national in our group. So that's why I went around in order to establish it that way. Then, of course, uh, in 1973, uh, Bishop Paulino approached me and he asked me if, if it's okay that he will, I will stay in Manila and become part of the Archdiocese of Manila. And I said, how can I do that? I will need that, the, the, uh, the consent of my bishop in Sorsobon. And Bishop Paulino said, don't worry, we will be the one to send a letter to the Bishop of Sorsobon, that time Bishop Arcelia. No? And then uh, after a couple of, uh, the first uh, answer, the bishop did not like to release me from Sorsobon. But then Bishop Paulino told me he they will write again. And in the second letter, and he uh, acceded the request that I be excardinated from Sorsovan and be incardinated in Manila. Uh, and unfortunately, by that time, uh, Cardinal Santos, who was my, the Archbishop of Manila at that time, because Bishop Paulino was only, only the auxiliary bishop, no? was already in the hospital, seriously sick, no? So Bishop Paulino told me, Bert, you have to wait for the condition of the Cardinal to improve. Of course, as you know, he died in that year, 1973, no? in September, if I'm not mistaken. So he told me, just wait for the next Archbishop of Manila. But you have already the consent of the Bishop of Sorsogon. So when Cardinal uh, Sin uh, came, I told him I have this one. And then he said, okay, wait for me first to be installed. So he was installed in March by April, I think, or May. 
he already accepted by an in incarnated me in Manila. At the same time, confirmed my, my, uh, my position as National Chaplain of the Student Catholic Action. At the same time, Chaplain of the Student Catholic Action in Manila, in the private schools of Manila, not in the public schools of Manila. So, Monsignor, but, ibig sabihin sa napakahabang 57 years, talagang tandang-tanda mo pa yung mga first couple of years, no? yung parang unang dekada ng iyong ministeryo. Kasi ibig sabihin talagang ang binabaybay natin ay anim na dekada halos. Tama po ba, Monsignor? Monsignor, napakaganda ng iyong memory, ha? Para kang computer na merong memory bank. So, palagay ko kahit nagkakaedad ang isang tao, pero yung mga highlights ng kanyang alaala ay nandyan pa rin. Kaya maliwanag na maliwanag kay Monsignor Bert ang kanyang pagsisimula sa kanyang ministeryo hanggang sa umabot siya dito sa paglilingkod sa Archdiocese of Manila at syempre utang na loob din niya sa Sorsogo dahil doon siya nagsimula. Pero hanggang ngayon si Monsignor ay ating kapiling sa Archdiocese of Manila. Sa ating mga taga-subaybay, ngayong Mayo, tayo ay nagbabalik tanaw sa mga alaalang ito. Bakit? Kasi itong buwan na ito, ating binubuo ang mga alaala at alala ng puso. So yung pangalawang word, alala, pwede rin siyang alala. Kaya yan ang mga maririnig natin sa ating mga bisita. At ngayon sa ating pagpapatuloy kay Monsignor Bert, hindi lang yung mga highlights ng kanyang priesthood. Siyempre Monsignor, gusto rin namin malaman ngayon yung pangkasalukuyan. May malaki bang pagkakaiba yung panahon na ikaw ay napakalakas pa. No? Tuloy-tuloy yung mga assignments mo, iba-ibang organization na naging assignment mo, maraming mga parokya, nagiging vicar foreign ka pa. Kung kasalukuyan, may mga challenges ka bang pinakaharap na kasama ng aging? Uh -huh. Okay. By the way, just so, ano, uh, in 1981, Cardinal Sin told pa Bishop Paulino to tell me that he wanted me to become Paris PhD because I have been long in organizations and special ministers. And so he had an instruction with Bishop Paulino that the first parish that will be uh, vacant, I'll be the Paris priest. And so I... City. It's my first parish, St. Joseph the Worker. And then, of course, I went to other parishes. And then, uh, when I, uh, there was a time I went to, to Rome to be able to refresh my theology. At the same time, I think it was my 25th anniversary as priest. And I decided to have some kind of a renewal course. On, and, uh, so I went on sabbatical year for one, uh, on one sabbatical year. That year, at the same time, for six months, I was in Rome doing my re refresher course in theology and pastoral work. Uh, then when I came back, then I was assigned in Capo as assistant parish priest. No? And after a couple of months, I was then assigned to Mountain Lupa where I became parish priest. And from that time on, I have become Paris priest in different places. And as you have mentioned, I became vicar foreign also in some of these uh, vicariates. No? Okay. Now, of course, the challenge is sometimes I, uh, we, we will have the challenge is how to be able to, to sustain ourselves. You know? And uh, I noticed now that there are times that you can forget things, no? And uh, I asked my doctor, what can I do? And he said, you take uh, this one. It is not a medicine, but it will be a help for your memory. And uh, it is some kind of a special, uh, I think the name is Tebunin, that uh, I take so that my memory will not really fail so much that I will forget many things, no? So I does, that has helped me. Now, in my present work, of course, 
when I reached 75, I asked Cardinal Tagle whether I am going to be already retired. And uh, Cardinal Tagle told me, a bird is strong. See, and, uh, so that's why at, uh, at the age of 75, he told me to continue until I was assigned here. I was uh, by that time already assigned here in this parish of St. Joseph. And that is when I was 75, uh, before 75 years old. And so um, it so happened also during that time, Cardinal Tagli decided to have a definite term for parish priests and for other positions. And that is every six years is the term of parish priest. So I suppose already be reshuffled last year which is the sixth year, because that happened in 19, uh, 2015, that decision. So we are supposed to have already our reshuffling last year, but then when we asked Cardinal uh, Advincula, then he said, well, I am new. Let me first know, know the place. Let me first know my priest. So he said, give me six months to one year, before I make the reshuffling. So that is what we are all waiting for. So that is the present situation. No? So my challenge is at the same time, I am, as you said, the spiritual director or advisor of the Corsillo and the Archdiocese of Manila. And about one or two years ago, uh, Archbishop uh, uh, the Archbishop of uh, Dabao at that time uh, I, I, the, was the president of the CBCP. And he also appointed me now as the national chaplain of the uh, Corsillo movement. No? So I am holding two positions in the Corsillo, Archdiocese and, and National. And uh, for your information, and maybe for the question of those who are interested to join, we will have the second national priest encounter to update no, the Corsillo in the Philippines to the present development of Corsillo in the whole world. That's why the uh, national, international advisor, a certain uh, archbishop in, in uh, Mexico, plus uh, the president, I think, of that area, is coming here on June. No, to uh, June 6 to, il to 11 to be one of our speakers. Unfortunately, it so happened also that the, uh, the custody of the family under which is the Corsillo classified, there is uh, going to be a meeting every year towards the end of May, and then they will try to reconcile if there are in the different continents. So hopefully by the time they come, because they will be our our speakers, then we'll have the latest development about the Corsillo. So this is the present situation of my life, waiting for my uh, retirement. <laughs> you know, because I'm already uh, more than the retirement the retire age. At the same time, waiting also for the developments in the Corsillo. So, and I have as Bishop Ambo, who is now the new president of the CBCP, uh, what the, in my appointment, there was no clear term. So he said, you just write us and we will see what we can do about it. But he said, to me, we might still appoint you as the national advisor of the Corsillo movement. So that's the situation that I am waiting, waiting, whatever is my uh, the, whatever the challenges that faces me at this age. Thank you, Dr. Gaines. Thank you, Erin. So congratulations, Monsignor Bert. Ah. Talagang may congratulatory note because you have been persevering all your 57 years as a priest. Kaya nakakatuwa ho kasi kahit beyond uh, 75 si Monsignor, nagpapatuloy actively sa kanyang ministry. Kaya ang ating mga taga-subaybay, dapat active na active pa rin ho kayo kung ikaw ay lola, kung ikaw ay lolo, patuloy pa rin maging active kung ano yung iyong pinakaharap pang kasalukuyan. Tignan niyo si Monsignor 
kasi niya talagang parang walang pahinga. No? Tuloy-tuloy pa rin. Kasi wala sa age. Talagang nandun sa kanyang perseverance. Thank you, Monsignor Bert Espinilla. At ka ngayon nabanggit din ni Monsignor Bert na meron siyang iniinom na gamot na ibig sabihin pang pa-enhance ng memory. Sa palagay ko ngayon naman magandang uh, pag-usapan. Yung mga tao naman na kahit hindi pa senior pero nag-aalaga naman ng senior. Dadako naman tayo ngayon sa ating nurse, ang tagapag-alaga ng mga nagkakaedad at may mga kalamdaman, si Nurse Erwin. Hi Nurse Erwin! Hi, good afternoon! Ayan. So ngayon ha, syempre, kailangan ko namang marinig. Kumusta ba ang iyong karanasan naman pag ang inaalagaan mo ay katulad ni Lamon Senior Bert? Pero si Lamon Senior Bert, wala pang tagapag-alaga eh, no? Kumusta ba, Erwin? Uh, so far, uh, okay naman. May mga challenges like yung uh, mapukulit, ganyan. <laughs> <laughs> Talaga yun na unang word mo ha, makukulit. So ibig sabihin, tayong lahat na nagkakaedad ha, talaga nga pasamad dyan yung nagiging makulit. Kasi nagiging paulit-ulit kami dahil uh, nakakalimot kami. Erwin, ganun ba ang karanasan mo pagkamatanda ang iyong alaga? Yes po. Binangarap mo ba talagang maging tagapag-alaga na matatanda? Ano ba yung naging pangarap mo nung bata ka? Uh, I have a great, uh, uh, to tell briefly about my childhood, I have a great memory of my childhood. I was very active and I, I always wanted to play outdoors. I love sports. I love basketball. And every Sunday we make it sure to hear a mass and uh, eat with my family. Then my parents always uh, are very hands-on in making our to promote our independence and development. Siguro yung yung continuous process and discovery ko uh, yung yung course ko na pag to take up nursing. Before before I enrolled in 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 nursing, criminology, HRF and then after a month I finally finally decided to take up nursing. Because my father was a retired colonel, he wanted me to pursue uh, uh, as a police officer. So that's why I enrolled at the same time as a criminology student. At, at, at the same time, I was also enrolled as a nursing student in St. Scholastica in Tacloban. And then my father always told me that Ah, uh, isang beses lang siya magpapaaral so so kung hindi kaya ng genes mo na mag-aral ng ganyang course, may as well take to up commerce or criminology. So I overcome it because my ate was a, also a nurse, so I took up nursing. So talagang kakaiba naman yung uh, buhay mo ha. Magtalayo yung criminology at saka yung nurse. <laughs> Yes, Paul. Yes. <laughs> yung criminology, laging may victim na yun, di ba? Yung nursing, siya yung mag-aalaga yung victim. <laughs> anyway, so nung ikaw ay naging nurse, wala ka bang pagdududa na o pagsisisi man lang na naku, sana criminology na lang itinuloy ko at hindi na nursing? Uh, so, uh, during the time na I was working in the hospital for four years, uh, four years, I finally loved uh, took, took, taking care of sick and ill patients. And then I finally uh, it find my passion in caring the sick and the uh, healthy individual. Ayan. So talagang nandun na yung buhay mo sa pag-aalaga no? ng, uh, may mga, ng uh, mga nanghihina. So hindi ko sasabihin laging may karamdaman. Minsan kasi wala pa naman sakit pero nanghihina na pero kailangan na ng assistance. So Erwin, masasabi mo ba na yung iyong pag-aalaga, yung pagiging nurse mo, ito ba ay isang profesyon na magpapayaman sa'yo o ito ay isang misyon na magpapalago ng iyong pananampalataya? Before, uh, siguro naman, uh, I took it as a profession kasi uh, gusto ko magkaroon ng income, ganyan. Pero all, uh, through the years, uh, it finally naging passion ko na 
mag-alala na may sakit. And before, uh, before I plan to go abroad to London, I took up the IELTS already. I passed it 7.5. And then I applied for 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 private duty nursing. And then and then I I started to love taking care of uh, sick sick adults. Before before my I wanted to to take care of my mother, but due to that I have a work, I I was not able to to, to take care of my mother. So, Erwin, paano ka naman napunta sa pag-aalaga ng mga alagad ng simbahan o alagad ni Kristo? Uh, I had a classmate who was working as a, a caregiver in Baclaran who was, who, was, who was taking care of the sick priest. And then he and then, and, and then I applied also to to take care of And then I was assigned here in Bahay Pari. Ayun. So, parang uh, double na yung iyong mission. Hindi ka lang basta nurse na nag-aalaga ng mga may karamdaman at uh, mga nangihina. Tapos ngayon, inaalagaan mo pa ang mga nag-aalaga sa kaluluwa ng tao. So, babalik ako ngayon kay Monsignor. Monsignor, hello. Hello, hello. Ayan, so napapakinggan mo ang kwentong buhay ng ating mga tagapag-alaga dito sa Archdiocese of Manila. Ang nurse sa bahay pari, ibig sabihin, pinangangalagaan niya yung mga pari. So, Monsignor, pag dumating ba yung araw na ikaw ay magre-retire na o magkakaroon ng karamdaman, are you entertaining in your mind na ikaw man ay aalagaan din ng mga katulad ni Nurse Irwin? Yes, of course. Uh, pero uh, I had made a suggestion to the Cardinal once we reach the age of retirement, no? And uh, hindi ba ang usual is that 75 years old, no? Sabi ko, pag uh, malakas pa naman ang pare, uh, kaya uh, hindi pa uh, na masakitin, no? Uh, hindi, hindi ba pwede sabi ko, no? Huwag mong ilagay sa welcome house o sa bahay pare para wala na siyang ginagawa kundi kumain, magbasa, matulog, <laughs> magdasal, no? Sabi ko siya kung naging very busy yung pare ng during his life as a pastor, parang maninibago siya. Kaya sinadyas ko ka I have also asked uh, some priests about it and they said they, they agree with that. Kaya sabi ko sa kanya, kung pwede ho, pagka may medyo malakas pa naman, kamang ng mga pare, wag ilagay ka agad sa welcome house o sa bahay pare. O and recently I heard that uh, the cardinal is um, planning to make that old uh, seminary building of the Our Lady of Guadalupe Minor Seminary into a retirement house, no? Instead of I think the welcome house in and. Uh, in uh, in Santa Teresa in Papa San Santa Magdalena near uh, San Pedro place no San Pablo area no yes. San Pablo area pa yon San Pablo area pa yan, no uh, so i said i i would suggest that you make the land the priest if he's still is strong and willing to be attached to a parish so that he somehow can help no the give at least giving the sacraments no like uh, confession communion etc that if he is still strong maybe even anointing of the sick so i think uh, the cardinal is open to the idea when i talk to talk to him about it so that is what i'm waiting for that from uh, hopefully that becomes some kind of policy of the archdiocese of manila that once a priest reaches the age of retirement, if he is still able to work somehow, imagine if you have been a pastor for, or you have been working for 50 years and suddenly you do not do anything, the more I think the person will become weak. But if he is doing something, he will be a bit strong, no? And I think the cardinal is open to that idea. We will know when finally he will make the announcement 
or what He will do with us who are the older priests. Thank you, Monsignor. Ibig sabihin talagang intellectually active ba talagang itong si Monsignor Bird? Kasi talagang ang projection niya no, ay uh, lalagpasan pa yung retirement age ng mga pare. Kaya dapat living an active life pa rin. Maraming salamat. At din din naman, Erwin, for my last question. Erwin, ano ba ang mensahe mo para sa mga viewers natin na nagkakaedad na na hindi naman sila mga pare kaya wala silang nurse Erwin na katulad mo. Pero ano yung maia-advise mo sa kanila na ngayon unti-unti nilang hinaharap ang kanilang pagtanda, minsan panghihina, and eventually ang pagkakasakit? Uh, my advice for them is to, to just uh, embrace the changes of being an older adult and and enjoy enjoy the enjoy life and and just be positive in all the changes that may arise in the health Salamat, Erwin. Maraming maraming salamat. Ang pasasalamat na yan ay hindi lang para sa iyong mensahe at ang iyong mga binigay na inspirasyon sa ating viewers, sa mga tumatanda na, pati na ng kanilang pamilya. Kung hindi, salamat. Pagkat nandyan ka para alagaan ang mga dating nag-aalaga sa kaluluwa ng sambayanan ng Diyos. At Monsignor, for our final uh, Uh, discussion, hindi na siya discussion kung hindi, panalangin mo Monsignor, ang ating mga senior citizens na sumusubaybay sa atin bilang pagtatapos ng ating episode ngayong Mayo. Okay. Uh, sa ngalang Ama, ng Anak, at ng Spiritu Santo, Amen. amang mapagmahal, makapangirihan, at maunawain. Sana'y gabayan mo kami lahat, lalo na kami nakatatanda, upang patuloy kami nagtitiwala sa iyong pagmamahal, sa iyong mga biyaya, na manatili kami matatag sa paglilingkod sa iyo sa anumang paraan, sangayon sa aming pakakayahan. Naway sa tulong na mahal na binat ni San Jose, biyan mo kami palagi ng biyaya na kinakailangan namin upang magkaroon ng kahulugan ang aming mga ginagawa sa buhay na ito. At ang kami ay mayroong inspirasyon na mag masumunod sa iyong kalooban, maglingkod sa iyo at maglingkod sa kapwa-tao. Salamat Panginoon, patuloy mo kong gabayan at tayo magdasal ng sabay-sabay Luwalhati sa Ama, Ama at sa Anak, sa anak at sa Espiritu Santo. Santo. Sa para noong una, may pagmasawa lang ang Amen. Amen. Sa nga ng Ama at ng Anak at ng Espiritu Santo. Santo. Amen. At bilang pangwaka, salamat sa panalangin na yan, Monsignor. Pero bakit nga ba natin binabalikan na ating mga alaala? Pakinggan din natin ang mga pahayag ni Pope Francis. Ang sabi po niya, But we must memorize our past and be a memorial of our own lives and our own journey. We must look back and remember and do it often. We may ask ourselves, at that time, God gave me this grace. And I replied in that way, I did this or that. He accompanied me. And in this way, we arrive at a new encounter. An encounter of gratitude. The words of Pope Francis. Maraming salamat. 